How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. A little bit of anniversary beer time in the form of Cane Brewings 2555, or 2,555, or Deuce 5 or 5 or 5 or, ah, whatever you want to call it. It's their seventh anniversary beer. Um, this is in the, uh, they're, I think they did a 255, like, 6 or something like that. A, I think it was, like, maybe a rum barrel aid variant. I have that one, too. But this is kind of, like, the staple anniversary beer it's been a while since i've done a king anniversary beer i actually have one floating around i don't know where it went actually it's back there somewhere um but i've done a couple but i haven't reviewed one i don't think in a couple of years um i could be wrong there um i should have looked before i recorded this but eh, you know me uh, so we're gonna dive into it let's read what it's all about here it's, it's anniversary l2555 why 2555 take 365s in which is a excuse me, a year, unless you count leap years, times that by seven, you get, that's the number you get, um, blend of barrel aged Belgian style ales, this is kind of like that, like pseudo solar method, there's a bits and pieces of each anniversary beer before in this one, so they gotta take the old beer, put it in a new one, do a blend of it, on the back here it says, to commemorate our seventh anniversary, we age Belgian style quadruple and rye barrels for a year, then blended our, our in our previous anniversary ales, two five 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 five. I think I threw an extra five in there. Um, Marries the complexities of its individual components with a little piece of her past. Enjoy now or in the future. Done and done. 12.5% alcohol by volume. And I like it. I actually like their old styling better. I actually have to find it. I, gotta, I know it's back here somewhere. This is their old style. Um, this is 1,095 actually. I had uh, 365 originally. I kind of like their old styling on their anniversary bottles better. But that's just me. Anyway. I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, nice silvered wax top. Let's dive into this sucker, see what she's got. Let's see if you can brute force through this wax. I always like it when I can do that. And uh, see what this sucker has. Drinking out of a actual cane goblet to give it the old authentic pour that some of you glass nerds out there appreciate so much. What do we have there? I mean, it looks quite a bit darker than uh, your base quad, but it's barrel age and it has so many other bits and pieces floating in it. It comes off a bit darker, more Belgian dark or even stout in color. Beautiful, delicious, vibrant, large bubble, creamy, kind of like malted malt ball colored head. Super tight, compact bubbles with a little bit of rising, bigger bubbles on top. And like I said, she's jet black. So closer to stout than quad, but if you actually look into it, you get that rich brown mahogany. So it's in there. It's going to nose. Yeah, it's nice, man. You really get um, you get a nice soft barrel char. That's the thing that pops out to me the most on it. Is this nice soft chocolatey, slightly smoky kind of barrel char on it. A little bit of soft kind of whiskey notes. Not really getting a huge spicy component from that rye. And there is the beers in there. It's not that prominent, but you get that nice rich, malty breadiness you typically get with quads. A little bit of soft red fruits, and that's pretty much it. It smells rich. It smells soft. It smells fluffy. Smells like a quad. It has a decent amount of barreling going on. Let's dive in. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, that's delicious. Listen, it's a little bit sweet. But you're talking about a big, huge barrel aged quad. I'm okay with there being a little bit of sweetness, especially with it being closer to 13%. You want a little bit of extra oomph. Let it sit and let it rest and like let it age gracefully. There's a big, huge, sweet component, but it's definitely in that kind of date, figgy, sugar daddy end of things. Not brown sugary, not um, generic sweet sugar like a lot of American Belgians tend to come off. Um, there's a nice, rich kind of soft cherryness to it. Nothing too crazy. It might be a bit of the whiskey, even though it's a rye, a bit of the whiskey along with the um, with the kind of uh, yeasty esteriness and bits and pieces that quads typically have inside of them. The mouth feels super creamy, super luscious, super soft. Mm. It's not hot at all. It's like super drinkable. I love the balance between the booziness of the rye barrel and the actual mixture, the blend of the actual old beers and the new beer because you are getting a Belgian quality to it. Sure, you can you know, kind of lean back and forth between quad and Belgian dark, but it does have a definite Belgian quad quality. I know they've dipped into dark 
and Quad Back to Dark and some of their older beers. So there is a blend in there. There's a nice rich sweetness to it. I said probably a little bit sweeter. You typically want from a base quad, even a barrel-aged one. But it doesn't get to that overly sweet cloying kind of thing. So I'm okay with it. Um, it's to, honestly the way that barrel shows. That soft, smoky charriness. That little bit of rubbed with chocolate, smoky um, char combined with the mouthfeel, which is fucking to die for. It's that superb and just the complexity and depth of where the beer goes listen cane people go ape shit over night to end all dawns and that's a fantastic beer i just reviewed it go watch it i think it's great but i've always loved them for their belgian based stuff whether it be their smaller belgian stuff or their bigger belgian stuff it's always been what i've loved it's some of the stuff i've had from the get-go and this is just as good as anything i've had from them barreled or otherwise i think these are the beers that people should be going online and having it sell out in 30 seconds instead of 30 minutes um but maybe i'm kind of happy that doesn't happen because i can get it it's not that hard to get pretty much like a night old dawns you go online you have depending on which variant set you want to buy um you know you have anywhere from a couple seconds to a minute you know this i think was on sale for 30 40 45 minutes that's not a big window, to, you know what I mean? I mean, that's a big enough window. It's not a huge window, but it's a big enough window. If you want it, you just went out and got it. Two, You can get two bottles of each. I only got one of each because that's all I really need. And uh, I just think it's a beautiful beer. And I think it's, it really sings to what they do well. Um, I actually started this uh, review session now. I usually do like two, three beers a session. I'm doing two. And I did their uh, Marzen. And uh, that was fantastic. And it's so cool to see a brewery that crushes it on the small end and, and, and crushes it on the big end. It's one of my favorite breweries, and I'm kind of happy that I live even closer to them. Um, and they do they do sell a lot of sizzle, but man, did they really crush it when it comes to the steak, too. So, yeah, I dig it. I dig it. I think it's it, it, it has a a depth and, and, and to it, a nuance to it, but at the same time, it's powerful. It's rich. It hits all the right notes that come off. Very authentic Belgian-style beer. I dare you to find a better Belgian-based barrel-aged beer. Maybe you can. That would be fantastic if you did. But it wouldn't be a runaway winner. This would definitely hold its own. So let's talk about it. It's one of the better barrel-aged beers I've had as a late... Yes. Even uh, style be damned. I just think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, bag of availability. Um, 20... It comes ends up coming out like 29 bucks a bottle. That's a little bit steep. It is. Um, but, you know, it sells out crazy quick. 30 minutes for, you know, however many they have. So... You know, grudge them of charging that. They basically charge twenty five a bottle, but they sell online, so you have to pay like taxes and fees and all that stuff. So, twenty five bucks for a boutique Belgian Solera method beer is actually, in the grand scheme of things, not that expensive. I don't think it is. Value uh, availability, brewery only, essentially. And leave you with, if you like what we well, like this, if you like Belgian beers, you like barrel aged beers, and you like a mixture of the two, not many people do it well. You know, St. Bernardus did quite well with their App 12 when the Apple Brandy barreled that. I mean, La Trap crushes it with their Barrel Aid series, but um, this is probably one of the best ones up there. Up there with those, up there with the Block 15s of the world. The ones that really kind of marry the two together, that barrel program and uh, Belgian beers is um, it's few and far between. And uh, yeah, King, you don't suck at this. So there you go. Another review in the books. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, Beer Massive. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing and Hopefully you guys enjoyed your review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little Belgian jam right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.